What? Oh, I touched the block. Oh! No way! I can't even tell you the amount of unfortunate events that just took place. I can't... That better be in the Mario movie. If that right there is not in the Mario movie, I'm gonna lose my mind. I am closing out GDQ. All right, so it's been a while since I played. First GDQ run. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, GDQ, here I come. Yeah, get that fire flower. Pretty good. No reset world one. How how much do you think we can keep this momentum on for? Uh, how's my game running, by the way, guys? Nice and smooth. Oh, what? I didn't mean to die there. YOLO. All right. After so many years, we still get it. There is a retro game store near me. I hope they're watching my stream right now. I will never, unless it's an emergency, buy a game from you ever. They are honestly an insult to video game players around the globe. The guy had Paper Mario for the Nintendo 64 for like $84. Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo without a box or anything. Just the, just the game cartridge, $100. Super Mario Brothers 3 was 40 bucks. Ocarina of Time was $60. Everything was like store value when it first came out. Everything was like as if it was just on the shelf. And they didn't come with boxes or control manuals or anything like that. None of that stuff. Mario 64 was $60. Never should Mario 64, especially without the box or anything, never in a million years right now should Mario 64 be $60. Mario 64 should be like 15 bucks. Every Pokemon game they have is, is close to $100. Like Pokemon Yellow, Blue, and Red were all $89.99. Like what? What? Come on, auto scroller. You're killing me here. Off screen wand grab? Ah, uh, imagine that first day back. This is a GDQ run. We're gonna make sure our, our GDQ runs are nice and crisp. Oh, wow, I made it up there. Was not expecting that. Yeah, if you guys got a lurk mode, lurk mode it up. Oh. If this run was GDQ, I wonder what time I'd get. We can die at GDQ, it's very possible. Of course I get the P-Speed. Get your ass up there, Mario. Get your ass up there. Oh, you fuck. You fuck. Well, at least I can relearn this. Are you gonna give me the pixel or not? Do I have to fight with you? Come on now, give me the pixel. It's not even giving me the pixel. It's like five times in a row. Thank you. It's like five times in a row. Are you guys gonna treat me different now that you know I'm turning 34? Is that a bad thing? I thought 34 was still kind of young. I feel young and I look young. I spoiled that I'm not 69. I did... I did mention that I wasn't 69 years old. That's true. For GDQ, should I should I go for the consistent subpixel setup? I mean, it's not a, it's not a bad play. I gotta remember where to stand. I think right here I won't touch it. So hopefully this is the right subpixel. Yo, let's go. No, I've never played StarCraft. Yo! Who needs a break, dude? Who needs a break from streaming? So, the subathon went 25 days long. Then I had to get out of a whole bunch of unhealthy habits, like drinking soda every day. I was doing that because, like, it was so easy, right? During the subathon, I'm sitting in front of the computer screen, the soda and the sugar, like, a whole bunch. Like, all that stuff, like, helps for the subathon. But it, it was, like, throwing me back into unhealthy habits again. So I had to break free of some of those. So I was like, I don't want to stream. I want to focus more on that kind of stuff. And then I wanted to spend time with myself. So I focused on that as well. I wanted to go see uh, some family. So I did that. I went back to Toronto, which was awesome. I haven't been there in so long, guys. When I went to my family's thing, my grandma's 90th, there was one of the kids there that I had never met before. And he's like, hey man, how do you feel about that, that 50-10? I was like, what? 
I didn't know he watched me. It was sick. I wasn't expecting to anyone to ask me anything about Mario 3. The friends that come down and stay, we normally have like a thing that we do together. We always go get a tattoo together, like an impulse tattoo. I like impulse tattoos because it's like, why care so much? You know, it's not the end of the world. Yo, let's go. That was sick. Um. Yo! All right, guys, how many hands? Let's go. First GDQ run. Mm. Yay! That would be great for GDQ. Only one hand? All right, first GDQ run. First run back. That was actually a lot closer than you guys thought. Hey! Very nice. First GDQ run. There we go. Let's go! We have to really practice some GDQ warpless. Because I don't think we're going to be doing early hammer manipulation for GDQ. I mean, if we can get super crisp, why not try for it? What is it, like a 20 second time loss at most? It would be pretty nutty to pull it off too. I was trying to find the early hammer... There it is, guys. The nips. It was early hammer 121 that got the record. All right, early schmammers. Uh, based on what the Hammer Brothers do is my indication of whether my inputs were early or late. Oh, that was late. Below below the sun level and two above pyramid. Below the sun level, two above pyramid. How did I guess it? Because I know. Here, I'll give you guys a quick example of how I know where I am. Okay, so I was able to call that because I knew I had jumped late and I know with late patterns, this is what you get. I said below the sun and two above the pyramid and that's exactly where the hammer brother was. When you look at this, you're like, I don't know what's going on, right? The most dumbed down version I can do is that the task for the early hammer with what, which is what I'm following, presses jump on this frame. That's when the task jumps to get the early hammer. That's when I try and jump to get the early hammer as well. But if I go into the task and I jump one frame early, this is what the Hammer Brothers do, right? So then I go into the task and then I jump two frames early and this is what I get, right? And it's so that when I mess up and I see that I jumped whenever and then I get a movement, I try and understand like if I get this movement with the Hammer Brothers, then that means I jumped one, two, three three frames late. This is where I normally jump. I have a track from this to here. So I know what seven frames late looks like. And then this is what the Hammer Brother movements do if I'm early and I did overkill, I overkilled it. I need to know that what I'm explaining makes sense because GDQ gave me, they pretty much gave me permission if I wanted a five minute segment at the start of my run to go over this kind of stuff. I need to make sure that I'm explaining it in a way that makes very easy sense that the average watcher can see what I'm talking about and be like, okay, I get it, I get it. So he's trying to jump on these frames, he's got these windows, and he knows if he's early or late based on what the Hammer Brothers do because he went into the tasks and deliberately jumped early and late to watch the movements. Really, all I'm doing is adding and subtracting one frame to the outcome of the task and watching what the Hammer Brothers do. That's all I'm doing. You could apply this concept to early Hammer, or sorry, to no hands, but it wouldn't help you get world record. This is where it makes no sense. Any kind of manipulation wouldn't help you get the world record in No Wrong Warp. It wouldn't help anything because the No Wrong Warp already goes as fast as you possibly can at the end and at the start of every level with the very, very, very small variances of Hammer Brother movements, right? So it would just be a waste of time. And I mean, if you're not, if you're not gonna go for world record in any percent No Wrong Warp, then I don't think you're gonna do a much harder and more complicated strat to get no hands just to get a a PB that you're happy with. You would just play until you get no hands and then be happy with your PB. It would never help. That's the sad hard truth of no hands manip for any percent no wrong work. And I mean, technically, what's the most I ever went by getting hands? I think I got pulled in by hands, I think it was like 47 times in a row. I think Zikubi was also in the 40s as well when I watched him. Let's go. The hammer looked kind of early. I don't know what that means. 
I'm not sure if you'd be able to see it, Cosmic, because you have to remember, Mario doesn't move until two frames after you press the jump button, right? So if you're basing it on when you saw Mario jump compared to when you saw the purple light, you that, you wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you were looking at. You were just. Nice to take. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. I just. It's it's hard. For, it's hard for me because like there's like early frames that you can get for the hammer and late frames and stuff, dude. I'm not even trying. Oh, I've done an entire run in the frog suit. I've done that before. That was awesome. Thanks, game. No, just smash. What the fuck was that? How did I take damage there? Did you guys see that? What the fuck? God, the Smash Brothers community and Nintendo just do not get along. Why won't they just embrace competitive Smash and tournaments and stuff? Like, what is wrong with them? But like, here's the problem. Nintendo refuses to give away 20 grand to a winner, prize winner of like a Smash Brothers tournament. They want to give away a fucking $20 me shop gift card. That's as far as Nintendo will go. I don't understand. Like, is Nintendo in some secret underground black market legal battle? Like, does Nintendo secretly not own the arts to like Mario and they have to pay some company off? Like, is there something we don't know? Because why, like, has anyone ever asked in an interview, like, why, why not Nintendo? And they, they just have like no answer. I just don't understand, man. Nintendo has one game that they can make a competitive fighting game with teams and esports and all that fun stuff. They just won't. The Upper Decker. Well, we already do off-screen wand grabs, but we wouldn't be able to manipulate it because of how subpixels work. Whoa, did I just go through that block? Did I go through that block or did I jump over that block? What happened? I, I don't even remember. I don't think I can say Mario 3 is my favorite. One of my favorites. It's just a really good speed game. Ah! Oh. So when the hammer brother moves left and down, that means that I got the frame in between the good frames. So I was off by one frame. How much do you want to bet that's what's going to happen at GDQ? We got to try this for GDQ, right? There's no way that we don't try this for GDQ, right? Right? If we nail it, that would be insane. Why do you do that? Why does it do that? So here's how it works. If I get the early hammer manipulation, there is no backup because I absolutely have to grab that hammer. So if the early hammer works in GDQ, I have no backup for early hammer. I have to die in the level. I'd have to kill myself and then re and then cloud across it when the hammer brothers out of my way or something. Now that is new. I've never had that happen before. I have never done that. I didn't hold jump. I jumped lightly when I timed it. I probably looked like an idiot doing it. That that was good timing. I felt like I, I hit it perfect there. Yeah, the ticking is for manipulation, which actually reminds me, you guys will not hear the ticking at GDQ. Stop! What is the game doing to me? Can you fucking stop, please? Yay! Look at us go! Oh! Made it. Made it. All right, looking good so far. Going and downloading ROMs off of ROM site is just as guilty as distributing it because you're taking part. Everyone, like, can't take the high road. It doesn't work. You wouldn't download a car, would you? Uh, yeah, by the way, if this run world records, I just want to say that everything that I've been talking about has just been examples based on what I'm reading in chat and nothing else. <laughs> I mean, I don't distribute ROM, so I mean, I don't have to worry about it. I don't think they'll let me play the NES in prison, no. 
Well, and this is why we don't want the music box from World 2. Unless this Hammer Brother comes out and goes left, that would be amazing. As long as he comes left. Come left? <laughs> he came left! He's a good comer. I'm impressed. I will never sub 50 at GDQ, trust me. First and foremost, I'm giving myself time to try and get the manipulation. So I can make slight mistakes in World 1. We'll see how it goes there. I'm pretty sure my world six in the world record went quite well, if I remember, which I don't remember. Since I have the 50 minute and 10 seconds, this is going for seven nine, no matter what. Every run from here on out goes for seven nine. Damn it, I tap so lightly. I have to go for duck clip, so odds are, man, odds are. I have to go for duck clip, guys, I didn't move. Oh, nice down input. Oh, come on. Nice down input. I'm not in- I can't save 10 seconds here to bring it under 50 unless I 7-9. If I get all four, one, that's so annoying. I did. We never had a chance. Oh my god. That's good. That's actually not bad. Now remember, we still have the clouds, so we cloud over... We're clouding past like a 42 second level. I know I didn't have a crazy fast world 8. It's very shaky. I might have used the star in the fortress or 8-1 or something, which I won't use here. If I use the star, then I have actually a decent amount of time saved. I used the star in 8-1 and the fortress? Wow. Okay. Doesn't matter anyways. It's over. What's this gonna be? Like a 50-30 something? Oh, look at how close we are. It's crazy, man. Dude, if we didn't get pulled in by that hand, it would have world record. Damn, dude. Well, that didn't take long to really kind of get back into the groove. That's a pretty good time, man. That's a good time. You can't complain about that. That's a good time. That was a good run.